So let's talk a little bit about white toner printers and if it's worth it or not. A white toner printer isn't just limited to t-shirts. If you're open to trying different products, then you can be making a lot of money. What's going on everyone, Mario here with Nickel Prints. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about my experience with my white toner printer. I've had the Uternet iColor 560 for just about a year now and I love it. I've had great success with it and I've done a ton of prints with it. Now the question of the video is gonna be, is it worth it? Is it worth the investment? And do I recommend it? White toner printing is just one of the ways that you can print full color t-shirts on demand. White toner printers provide full color t-shirt prints in most cases for just under $3. Obviously that price can vary a little bit based on design, size, a bunch of different things. But as a good average, under three bucks is pretty typical. And white toner printing also allows you to print color white, which as we all know, no printers can really do that except for DTF, DTG, and maybe UV printers? I'm not sure about UV printers, but that's aside the point. We're talking about home t-shirt stuff here. So what exactly is a white toner printer? A white toner printer is is a laser printer that allows you to print the color white. So you're gonna have your basic colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and instead of black, you're gonna have white. So it'll be CMYW instead of CMYK. Now sometimes you're gonna see CMYK plus W, which is just all the colors plus white. And for the most part, with all the research that I did with these printers, including the white toner printer that I have, you're not gonna be using all five toner cartridges. You're only gonna be using four. You're gonna be using CMY and W. My printer, the Uternet iColor 560, did include the black cartridge, but I've never used it. They include it just in case you want to print out regular things, you know, just like regular paper if you want to print out some notes, but I never used it for that. So that cartridge is literally just sitting somewhere on a shelf. It hasn't even been opened. So if the printer doesn't include the black cartridge in it, how does it print black or come out with these darker colors? Easy. It just mixes all the colors together. So it'll get the cyan, magenta, and yellow and mix it all together to create a black. Now, it's not the darkest black you're going to get, but it's black. Some people might be very picky and not like it because it might be a little bit too light for their taste. I don't need the blacks in my prints to be darker than night itself, so it's perfectly fine. It's dark enough to be black, it doesn't look gray, it's, it's fine. Now that you know about the toner cartridges, let's go ahead and talk about the paper and the adhesive. White toner printers use two different sheets. They use the A sheet and the B sheet. Now, whenever you buy these, you're pretty much going to always be buying them in a set. So when you purchase it, you're going to get A and B. Sometimes you can get them separately, but for the most part, at least where I buy them from at Heat Transfer Warehouse, they come together. Also, there's a bunch of different papers. The same way there's a ton of different heat transfer vinyls and a bunch of different types of sublimation papers and just a bunch of options for everything. There's also a bunch of options for white toner printer paper. They have some that are supposed to be more waterproof, some that are supposed to last longer, some that are softer, some that are quicker, some that are supposed to make the image a lot more vibrant, and some that are even just one sheet of paper and don't require both sheets. But I've actually heard bad reviews about those. I've heard that those don't last that long, that they actually start fading after a couple washes. But don't take my word for it. I haven't tried them. If you want to try it out yourself, by all means. If you have tried it out, make sure to comment down below your thoughts on it because I've actually been kind of curious about it. So White Toner Printer uses two sheets of paper. Which one do you print on? A lot of the times you would think that it's this one, right? Nope. This is actually the adhesive. You're going to print on this one. And this is going to have two sides to it, obviously. One, two. And one is going to be a lot more plasticky than the other. The more plasticky one is going to have a shinier look to it. And then the other side is going to be a lot more matte and it's going to have more of a softer feel. That tells you that this side is the carrier and then this side is the side that you print on. Obviously you can't really tell the difference through the camera. But one easy way to tell which side is the one that you're going to print on is just scratch a little bit of the corner. So if you scratch it and nothing happens, that's the plastic. If you scratch it, I'm gonna waste some money for you guys by destroying this, so please like this video. So I'm gonna scratch it from here up. You can tell the difference right there. Obviously you don't have to do that, just scratch the little corner. But I just did this so that way you can see that you can scratch a little bit of the corners and you can tell which side is which. Now the adhesive side is kind of obvious. The adhesive itself is white and then the back of the paper just has a bunch of yellow stripes. At least for this one, this is the standard internet paper. So after you have your image on the sheet, all you have to do is heat press it to your B sheet and then peel away the excess and you're pretty much done with your transfer, you're ready to press. That entire process of putting the two sheets together is actually called marrying. Now marrying the paper is kind of a learning curve. Some people have a problem at the beginning with it because they don't know how fast to peel off the adhesive. Sometimes people don't keep an even speed while peeling it. Maybe the heat press can be wrong. There's a lot of trial and error into it and there's a lot of trial and error in the different kinds of papers as well. The way you marry the standard paper, premium paper might not marry the same way. So that brings me to my next point when it comes to white toner printing paper. I can't stress this enough and this is something that you're always gonna have to keep 
keep in mind. Try different types of paper. Always try the other options that there are available because you might find a different type of paper that you're using a lot better than the current one that you're using. You might have some issues with the standard paper that you're trying out, like me personally, the durability of it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I never opened myself up to trying all the other papers. That one is on me. Am I gonna try the other kinds of papers at this point? Honestly, probably not because I have the DTG printer. So I'm not using the white toner printer as much as I used to, but I do have some other plans for it. So I can't stress enough, try the different options for papers. It could be pricey because some of these papers can run one or $200, but it could really be worth your while. Now the pressing of the actual transfers onto the shirts is fairly easy. The technique is probably something that you might have to practice once or twice, but overall it's really easy to press the transfer onto a shirt. All you have to do is press it like you would press almost any other image. And then the trick comes when you peel off the carrier. The best way to do it is just fold over the carrier over the image and just start rolling it off. And there's actually a super color versus white toner printer video that I have where I show how to peel the carrier. So if you wanna learn, just go ahead and check out that video. I'll have it linked down in the description below. Now we've learned about the white toner printer itself. Now, what about the software? The software I think is specific to the printer that you end up purchasing. So if you get an Oki versus the Uninet, you might have two different softwares. But included in my Uninet iColor 560 was the iColor Pro Rip. Now that software has a lot a lot of features, it has a lot of settings, a lot of things that you can tweak. It's kind of overwhelming at first. When I first opened up the software, I my I just had a blank stare. Little by little, I just started poking around like I usually do and started figuring things out. Whenever it came to any issues, honestly, Facebook groups were my best friend. Just join a Facebook group, ask a question. If you have a question for some settings or why something's printing out wrong. But overall, the setup of the software itself was pretty easy. It wasn't anything out of this world. Learning how to use the software, as I said, is something that I learned by just poking around really loading up the image and then just hitting prints is really all I had to do at the beginning to get started printing I did eventually come across a couple issues where my image was coming out choppy for whatever reason then that's when I went onto a Facebook group asked and I found that the issue I was having was actually a very common issue they gave me the explanation right away and I fixed it so while it is something that you can open up for the first time and find overwhelming it's you know like any other software it just takes a little bit of time and patience to get to learn and you'll be pretty much up and running in no time now how much does it cost? Well, white toner printers can range anywhere between $2,000 all the way to over $10,000. So that's the price for the printer. Now, what about the accessories, like the toner? When it comes to the toner, you're gonna to be spending anywhere between $200 to $500 for the toner, at least in my case. Quick mental note, always remember, when you run out of white, you're gonna pay extra. Whether it be white ink or white toner, it's always gonna be more expensive than the colored ink or toner. At around two to $3,000, you're gonna be getting one of the smaller printers, those usually print A4s or 8.5 by 11s. Their printing speed isn't as fast as one of the other ones would be, and their toner cartridges typically are also a little bit smaller. You might be missing some features such as wireless printing, maybe a color LCD screen, just a bunch of little things here and there that really add up to the price and just give you either a better overall user experience, an easier experience, or just more efficient printing. Honestly, you're gonna have to do a lot of comparing and contrasting to a few different printers so you can make sure you're getting the right one for yourself. But that's for the smaller ones. When you start getting up to the eight, nine, ten thousand dollar ones, those are already some fairly big printers. When I was looking to make the investment, I was looking at either the iColor 560 or the iColor 800. Now the price difference, I think was about a three or four thousand dollar price difference. The iColor 560 came out to about four thousand dollars while the iColor 800 was about $8,000 or $9,000. I don't exactly remember what I was quoted. Now the biggest difference between the two was the print size, the print speed, and the size of the actual machine. So when we're looking at the iColor 560, we're looking at a printer that's about this big. You know what? I wasn't gonna do it just because it's a really heavy printer, but I'm gonna take out the printer for you and I'm gonna hold it for a little bit because it's really heavy, just so you guys can see exactly how big it is. So this is the iColor 560. It's kind of heavy. So that's the printer itself. As you can tell, it's not that big. Um, when it comes to weight, I want to say it weighs maybe about like 70 pounds. And then the other one that I was looking at, the iColor 800, is a lot bigger. You know when you go into an office and you see one of those big office printers that people use, the laser ones that have the big toner cartridges? For the most part, they usually just print black, but some print color. But then IT restricts you from printing color because it costs too much money. Yeah, my old job, we did that. People wanted to print color just because it looked pretty. These were papers that were just going to be stuck in a binder and on a shelf. Really? Whatever, that's beside the point. So that was about the size of the 800. It was a pretty tall standing printer. It's something that would have to stand on its own. Now the cool thing about it is that it printed really fast, which really wasn't a huge factor for me. What I really liked about it, which was really the only reason I was considering it in the first place, is because it printed 11 by 17. And if you know me, you know I love oversized images. I love big prints, I don't like little ones. 
But ultimately, the price difference got me, and I ended up going with the smaller one. Now, the 560 that I got prints up to A4 Legal, which is about 11 by 14. But the cool thing about it is that it comes with a software called the Smart Cut. Now, what the Smart Cut does is it splits your image into two different sheets, so that way when you print it, it prints on two different sheets, and then you're able to press one followed by the other to make an oversized image. Now, the issue with that is, depending on the image, you might be able to see the break as to where it was cut. Me, personally, I never used the software itself. I actually ended up cutting it myself using Photoshop. I found it to be a lot more efficient. But if you don't know how to do that or don't want to do that, then the smart cut, it helps. It, it does work. So ultimately, I went with the smaller one because of the price. After one year, do I think that it was worth investing into a white toner printer? That's very dependent on what you're going to do. Now, let me explain myself a little bit on this part because this is where it can get a bit complicated. The white toner printer is an awesome printer. It has a bunch of different possibilities, but when it comes to t-shirts, it can be hit or miss. Now, what I mean by that is the prints are always going to come out on point. The colors are going to be great. After you press it, it's going to be nice. The feel, in my opinion, is okay. I don't mind the feel to it. Some people don't like it because it feels papery. But the feel of the designs, I personally don't mind them, and I've never had any complaints on them. Now, the issue that I have with the white toner printer is the fact that it wrinkles and it cracks a lot more than I'd like it to. After only one wash, there's going to be wrinkles. That is a given, and that is one thing that I noticed from pretty much the first press. You're going to have wrinkles on the design itself. Now, that doesn't bother a lot of people. It kind of bothered me, but it's something that I was able to look over. But just so you know, after the first wash, there will be wrinkles on here. Now, there's a few ways that you can start to try and avoid those wrinkles or avoid those wrinkles that eventually lead to cracking, and that's by rasterizing your image. When you rasterize your image, you're pretty much putting a bunch of little holes in here, like just spread out across the entire image, just tiny little microscopic, maybe not microscopic, but tiny little holes that kind of give it a halftone effect. And it's spread out across the entire image. And what that does is it allows water to be able to go in and out of the design without getting stuck behind it and just washing the whole thing as a whole. It just makes the breathability of it a lot better. It makes the feel of it better. But that's what a lot of people say. Personally, I never liked it. I don't like the look of rasterizing. I never really liked how it felt. I never liked how it looked. I like big block images. If it's supposed to be a solid block image, that's what I like. I don't like to have all that extra little stuff on it. Pretty much anybody that you talk to is gonna say, yes, rasterize your image. And I'll tell you, if it's something that you like to do, if it's something that you like the output of it, then yeah, do it, that's fine. Me personally, I don't do it because I don't like it. Now the blue shirt and this shirt are both shirts that I did in April of this year, May, June, July, August, September, October. We're in November now, so that's been seven months since I printed the shirts. This one is a kid's shirt, so it's used a bit more. And this is actually my wife's shirt, which she pretty much only uses to sleep at this point. So it's used maybe once a week, if that. So this one has definitely been washed at least 12 times. And this one, probably less, maybe like seven or eight. And unfortunately, both of them have very visible signs of cracking, and this one even has some signs of peeling. Now, I have mentioned in prior videos that I have had a few shirts out there that have lasted almost 20 washes, and they have, but that's with specific care instructions. What I tell my customers all the time whenever I give them a shirt that's printed using white toner, don't throw it in the dryer. The shrinking of the shirt is going to increase the wrinkling, which will increase the tears. Now, there are definitely ways that you can increase the lifespan on these. For one, you can try different kinds of papers. As I stated before, I never tried different ones, but I have read several user reviews of people using different types of papers that they find great success in that last long time. Other than that, there's also this thing called T-Seal. Either T-Seal or T-Sheet. I don't exactly remember what it is, but I'll have it linked down in the description below. And what it is, is a post-pressing sheet. On one side, it's more of a rubbery feel to it. And what it does is when it's on top of the image, it really presses down on the design and binds it more with the fibers. So it really imprints it a lot more into the t-shirt than regular craft paper would. Ultimately, the lifespan of the design is going to end up winding down to the design itself. But aside from those two options, post-press care is really what's going to save the t-shirt and make it last longer. So when it comes to t-shirts, I think it's worth it if you're going to be doing one-offs. It's pretty much perfect for shirts that people are going to wear a few times and just keep there and not really care too much for. Like this, you know, a one-off shirt. A Disney shirt that we made for a trip and that's pretty much it. Another thing that the white toner printers are really good for is Etsy. All of my Etsy orders were pretty much done specifically using my white toner printer. And all the feedback I got from my customers was positive. Nobody ever complained about any colors, about any wrinkling, the feel of the design, nothing. All of the shirts have positive reviews and the one negative review I got isn't even because of the design, it's because the shirt was too small. So if you're planning to use a white toner printer for something like Etsy, you'll be fine. So for things like that, I think the white toner printer is perfect. The printer itself doesn't have a lot of maintenance. You really don't have to do anything to it. 
I just have it sitting there and whenever I decide to use it, whenever I need to use it, whether it be tomorrow, next week, or next month, I just go ahead, open the software, and print. That's one thing I love about the white toner printer. There's absolutely no maintenance. It's pretty much just use whenever you need it. Just always make sure it's plugged in so it does its own maintenance. Now, when it comes to things like work shirts, shirts that are gonna be used every single day or washed either weekly or maybe even more than weekly, I would stay away because they're gonna be washed frequently. And if you have a work shirt, you want it to last, I mean, you want it to last at least a year, right? You don't want it to be two or three months down the line and the shirt's already cracking, has fades. It's, it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look good. A work shirt, you want it to last. If you put vinyl on it, it's gonna last. The vinyl will probably outlast the shirt itself if you press it right. That's what you want when it comes to things like work shirts. You want the design to last and outlast the shirt if possible. And unfortunately, the white toner printer won't be able to do that. Eventually, it will crack, it will fade, it will peel. Now on a side note, if you're not doing t-shirts, you can still make a lot of money using a white toner printer. A white toner printer isn't just limited to t-shirts. If you're open to trying different products, then you can be making a lot of money. White toner printing has a bunch of different options in the sense that you can print on hard surfaces. Now the same way with t-shirts, you're gonna have to use a different kind of paper and some trial and error. With white toner printing, you can print onto wood, you can print onto glass, onto balloons, Seriously, you can print on these balloons. How cool is that? I haven't tried it. That's actually something that I've been wanting to try. I actually have the balloon set on my Amazon cart right now. I just haven't purchased it yet. If these are flat, you can print on them using a white toner printer and sell them. You can customize these balloons with a face on them or with whatever message you'd like. So that in itself, I think is really cool. There's a bunch of different possibilities that you have with a white toner printer. You just have to explore all of them and see what works for you. If you wanna check out the iColor 560, I actually got mine over at Heat Transfer Warehouse. I'll have the link for it down below. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button. Let me know down below your thoughts on the white toner printer. Do you have one? Are you thinking of getting one? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious as to your opinion with white toner printers. If you found the video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe. As always, I appreciate all of you being here. Thanks so much again and catch you guys next time. Peace.